where Kiswahili was being born and raised, but now it's in many countries in Africa. You go to Rwanda, they speak Kiswahili, you go to Kenya, all our neighbors, and also some parts in Southern Africa, you can still use Kiswahili. So it's getting a, to be a common language in Africa. And also that's one of the uh, national languages of the African Union? They are now using it in our African parliament, which is getting it to be more famous and strong. Uh, we hope yeah, that uh, one day, one day we're gonna use Kiswahili as the African nation's, African nation's language. So, uh, where you are in Tanzania, it's uh, not other, no other country in Africa has got a huge number of tribes that are living together with no conflict. Right. In Tanzania, we are 120 recognized tribes. That means there are other tribes living without being listed in the list of the tribes we have in the country. We still have people from Congo, we have people from Rwanda and Burundi who are living here. We don't really know what are their tribes, so slowly we'll adapt them and the number will get bigger. We speak common language, Kiswahili, but we have our mother tongue. So it depends where you are, but if you back to your hometown, home village, motherland, that's where you can easily enjoy speaking your mother tongue uh, and everyone in our country loves to practice the language of the parents. Normally it goes like you speak language that belongs to your father on the father's side because to our culture we take the name of the father but it, since it's known as a mother language, mother tongue most of the people do speak the ma mother language because she's with the kids all the time. So when you're here, you hear like I and Eugene speaking a totally different language. Do not get upset. It's our mother tongue. And we use it not most of the time, but when we are with people, we use Kiswahili. I mean with the other tribes. Uh, we have big, the biggest tribe in Tanzania is Sukuma. Sukuma tribe is found in three regions along the Lake Victoria, but they are not the dominant one. They are not the strongest, although they are the biggest. The current president of Tanzania, John Pombe Magufuli, is from Lake Zone. He's from the Sukuma tribe, but anyway, he's ruling the whole country without uh, showing or without practicing that he is from the strongest or the biggest tribe. So that means we don't have the strongest tribe, we have Tanzanians who are living together. This name is derived out from Tanganyika and Zanzibar. <coughs> Tanganyika has lost the name Tanganyika totally. That you can hear it from very few people. But Zanzibar has still got its name, the island of Zanzibar. We'll be going there in a few days from now. And there you will really see the Arab, Arabic uh, culture some of people really speak Arabic and that's where Kiswahili coast of Dar es Salaam and Zanzibar is where Kiswahili comes from which is the mixture of four to five language the main language is Bantu originally from South Africa and then we have Arabic in it we have a little bit of German we have a little bit of English and we have a little bit of Portuguese in it these are I cannot say the colonialists, I can say the foreigners who came to this part of Africa and uh, As so-called traders. People. So today Kiswahili, it doesn't sound like a combination of other languages, it sounds as like one strong language in our country. We have like Shule, which is a German word, Sa, which is Arabic, Meza, Arabic. And today we also have some native languages like the Maasai language into because it's a growing language so it goes a lot of uh, in Tanzania it's we have a lot of things to see if you cannot do it one time that means just the beginning this safari is just the beginning that means you need to come back again maybe and again because today we will see Arusha National Park Dar es Salaam, Zanzibar. What you haven't seen where the Bushmans are, Lake Easy. You 
you have not seen the biggest uh, uh, flamingos, the birds, breeding site, Lake Natro. You haven't seen the biggest wildlife migration in Africa, Serengeti. So all of these are almost in Tanzania. If you want to do the bedding safari, Tanzania is the best. We have about 520 plus different species of birds. If you want to learn about uh, nature in terms of forestry, we have huge forests like uh, Usambara Mountains. We have parts of the country with the Miombo woodlands. So we have a lot of things to do in the country. As we'll be going out tomorrow to Arusha National Park, you will see different uh, 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 from the ecotone of the forest, we go up to see the rainforest, and then we see some sh good shapes of the volcanic formation because uh, Mount Meru it comes from volcanic eruption. I mean the, the, the landscape. So you will see the, you will see a lot of lot of things. And then when we go to Dar es Salaam, I haven't mentioned anything about Arusha because we will be doing there. You will see the history of what we have been talking of different tribes. Dar es Salaam is the biggest town in, Dar in, in Tanzania was our capital city. Currently we are the capital city to move to Dodoma. Dodoma is more in the middle of the country. So when we go to Dar es Salaam you'll see where one city uh, 5.5 to 6 million people. Wow. And remember I said we have a lot of tribes. 5.5 to 6 million people are the people of different tribes living in one city without like asking where are you from? What is your tribe? Easily we can tell by ourselves, I can say he is Chaga from Kilimanjaro, he is Maasai from uh, northern part of Tanzania, he is Pare from uh, Usambara. So we will tell by looking to somebody, just physical appearance. I'm sure you cannot easily tell. When you talk so to what, me... What is it? The eyes, the nose, the teeth? The... The, as you have said, the eyes <laughs> differs, not really, but the shape of the face, some of the tribes with a round face, some of the tribe the face like me, but looking to the uh, the shiny face or darker like I do. So it, it depends of where the people are from. The only difficulty we have, we have a lot of intermarriages. And um, in Tanzania, as I said, we have lots of tribes, but the the tribe that is now getting bigger and bigger is Swahili people. Wa Swahili. Every tribe starts with W A. Wa Pare Wa Masai Wa Iraqi. We are Iraqis. I and Fiji. Wachaga because Wa it tends to show the origin of that certain tribe. So Wa Swahili is a group of people with no mother tongue. Why? Because the father is from X tribe and the mother is from white tribe and instead of them having a conflict of interest which language to be used they decide to use the national language which is Kiswahili and we call that group of people who are Swahili the people who cannot practice their mother tongue they cannot uh, talk of somebody without somebody knowing what they're talking about <laughs> to, make it, to make it that way so uh, in the country we have that, 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 that group is growing so fast because of intermarriages. In the early days, getting like to get married for a Maasai woman, it was historical. Getting to get married to a European woman, it was like impossible. And getting to an Indian woman to an African man or the other way around, it was not even recorded. But today we have mixture of everything actually we have a lot of Europeans who are moving to Africa and yeah. a lot of Africans who are moving to Europe but finally <laughs> that, that will bring the peace of the world because they will not be me they will not be you because you don't know where you're from that's interesting <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> um, so welcome to Tanzania and feel at home enjoy you are from Africa to America and now you're back to Africa where your heritage is. We'll be very happy to answer every question that is within our capacity. We don't want to make big stories of things that we don't know. But 
things that I really know that even if you ask me in the middle of the night after you wake me up, I will have the same answer. Unless otherwise, we will go through books that we have a lot of good books. By profession, I'm a, a guide. I have been working in the uh, tourism industry since 2002. So, about 19 years. 2002 is the time I become fully a guide employed by a company. But before that, I was doing it under supervision. So when you go to Arusha National Park, I have no fear of answering any question you want to know about what life. When you come to Arusha, we go to um, German Boma, where the Germans were having an administration office. There we have a guide who will tell you about the German history, but there are also um, information in the walls that you can go through. And when we out for dinner or some three hours I'll always tell you that is the story about Tanzania and the people in Arusha. The easy way we can do this is me to say welcome to Tanzania time to enjoy and relax. Yes, absolutely. We don't want anybody of you to go home and say wow that was not what I wanted. I want you to go home and tell everybody, if you're planning to go for a safari, go to Africa and go to Tanzania. Absolutely. There you go. Rock on. You want <laughs> as, as you know, in other many, many countries in Africa, we have tribal conflicts. But if you've been going through the history of Africa and the world, we don't have such a situation. So it's safe to come to Tanzania. It's a place that you can enjoy a place that you can learn a lot of things in one bowl. Today we have about uh, 23 protected areas in the country in terms of national parks, wildlife management area. I'll tell you all of this because you may ask what is the wildlife management area, what is the national park, what is the conservation area. We'll talk about that when we are in Arusha Nation. So, Coming to Tanzania, you can easily spend one month traveling without finishing all we have been protecting for many years. When you're in, in town like Arusha, it's safe, but it's a life in the city, life in the town. We would advise you not to uh, engage yourself into black market. If you want, black market. <laughs> if you want to change your money, change money it change. from the... Uh. The, the, the bureau change or from the bank if you want to buy jewelry buy jewelry from a good source like a shop or in a supermarket if you will visit one changing money on the street it can be easy and good but you may get you give money and get what's not money buying okay. things but buying things i'm not saying bad. Okay. buying things in the street it can be very cheap but Nobody can ensure the quality, and if something goes wrong, you have nowhere to go. Our people are very good people. Some of people are very honest, they want to sell to you, but maybe the price, handling the price can be very difficult out in the street. Don't worry about that, we will be around. I will be there with you all the time. And if you feel like something you want to do is not something you're happy with, please ask me and I will be happy to help you. Right. Uh, we don't have a lot of beggars. Though, although we have few that if they notice that you're a tourist, they will want to sell or ask for help. Or, so we don't really attract it. But if you feel like you want to help somebody, you can do it. We don't really encourage it because by doing so, in very few days or years or months, we'll have a lot of people who will keep on pushing the windows and ask for it. Driving in the town, in the city, you can open your window, but do not open your window to the maximum when we stop, like in the traffic lights, just for the safety. Nothing has ever happened with the groups that I have been leading. I 
worked with Americans, a company known as Odysseys Unlimited, for five years, four, four and a half, five years. Nothing has ever happened. It's because I always tell people ahead of time, you're in a city like in other cities in the world, take precautions. Taking pictures, you can take pictures of everything, including nothing. <laughs> uh, what about the museums? Yeah, it's all allowed. Pictures and videos? Yep. Yes, we'll be paying the interest That's why fee. I would never go back to another the French countries because they don't let you record in the museums. No, no, no. Like the Senegals of the world, uh, um, us, Togo and can, Benin. They won't you, let us, me do it. For us, you can take pictures of everything, with exception of police. Like we're driving the police under all, all the militaries. Mm -hmm. If they are military officers, the military, you know that how it works all over the world. You cannot just easily take the, the officials photos. But uh, other, 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 out of that, you can take pictures of people when the bus is moving. Like you want to take a nice picture of the people, you can do it. Taking pictures to the people's faces can be difficult. <laughs> like I know. Some tourists will want. Oh, he looks very nice. He looks. He's, he, he looks very handsome. He looks. Or well, anyway, it's people thinking and try to take close photo of somebody's face. Sometimes it, can, it cannot be easy. But taking the general photos of the buildings and the people moving, there's markets. Please do it. Uh, the other thing is drinking water I can drink water from the tap but for you I can advise that drink water bottled water purified water because of immunity right. if you do what I'm doing you will be in trouble and if I do exactly what you're doing I sometimes be in trouble do anybody of you know what is sauerkraut Germany in 1998 to 1999. I love even today if my friends are coming from Germany, I order sauerkraut. That thing doesn't love me. <laughs> it really upset my stomach, but anyway, I eat it. The same, the same situation happened to my German clients when they come here. They want to test ugali. You know what is ugali? It's a kind of polenta. It's a maize meal cooked with boiled water. Nothing else has been added in between. There's no butter. There's, it's only pure maize meal and water. And that's our stable food. We eat. I can eat three times a day without any problem. But if I give to my friends from Europe, they get sick of it. So don't really do what we do, but do what is allowed. If your senses are warning you not to do it, then you better respect it. Because we have instinct that always talk to us. Don't do not just deny it because it's telling you something important. The food is being processed in a very hygienic way that everyone can eat. But uh, And in Africa, in this part of Africa, Tanzania, if you cannot, like if you cannot, yeah, if you can stiff porridge, yeah. yeah. the, the beginning you make porridge and then you keep on adding flour until it gets wow. as until it gets stiff as much as you want. If you go to Sukuma land, we say it's a piece of stone because they make it so stiff. So people here, we we, we cook our local food. But the food that you'll be eating it will be a little bit different from our local meals. It's got most of our food is Arabic cuisine. So if you get a lot of spices, a lot of curry, you know where it comes from.
you're it's talking, okay to eat that. You're talking of the open air restaurant at the Forodani? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you get it fresh there, it's safe. Okay. But if you don't get it fresh, yeah. then it's not. But don't get something which you didn't see like when they are preparing it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so don't get no leftover from like two days ago. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Forodani doesn't have doesn't have leftovers because they doesn't have a fridge to keep it. Uh, the wow. thing is, if it's been cooked a while ago, it's already cold, right. then it's not good for your tummy. Otherwise, well, you can eat. Like if you go to Farodani, they have like fish skewers, they do it fresh. The pizza, the small pizza, the mini pizza, they do it fresh. There are a lot of things that you can eat there, but uh, I can point it out that you don't go that far. Even to the street of Zanzibar, when you're walking, you can may find people are cooking lots of nice food. If it's from the oven, if it's from the pan, uh, from the frying pan to your hands or to your mouth, it's safe. But if it's been covered somewhere, then you have to ask yourself, am I going to eat or not? Yeah. In the hotels, they are very good food. Yeah. Some of the tourists, in terms of Europeans, when they are here, they are scared of eating salad. Because it's raw. If it's been prepared well, hygienically, with good dressing, you can use it. But, uh, Eating something that you are not used to. Our food, our our fruits are being grown under the open sun, not from the greenhouse. So they can make it a little bit strong for you. So strong for you, but good. Very good. It has maybe more calories. It's very good because the sun has not to do to the plants. And what if you what eat the kinds of fruit in particular is uh, good for us to try? I can say all the fruits are good, but only apple is important. We don't grow a lot of apples here. Apples? Apples, apples yeah. yeah. Our apples are small and it's mostly used for making juices. Oh. But the ones that you get in the buffets are important. All other fruits, carrots, you can eat. Oranges, you can eat. Now we are in the, now we're in the season for now we're in the season for pineapples. They are so sweet you can enjoy them. And I know that you you grow bananas or you ship the bananas. Important. Please please when we have time in Russia we can get a, our banana test so different from because they get ripe on the tree. And they're smaller, right? We have from this very smallest to the size of Chiquita. Uh, Chiquita. So you're welcome to and I'm, I can promise you that you've made a good choice to come to us, to come to Tanzania. Because to my experience, lots of people will come here and they will come again. I'll tell you the, the, the thing that I will never forget in my life. I speak German, so if anybody of you speak German, we can speak. I was at the same airport where you landed in 2008, waiting for my clients the same way I have been waiting with a piece of paper for you. And the lady come out of the uh, check out and rush to me after she saw the name and just said, watch my luggage I'm going to the washroom and then her husband come out like he is finished trying to pull his legs to reach where the luggage is and when she comes back from the washroom she asked him to go to use the washroom because we'll have one hour drive to Arusha I'm driving I'm the guy and then when he went to the washroom she said help me he refused to come up to Africa I pushed him to come and now he is already reacting <laughs> that Africa is not for him. Wow. Anyway, a few minutes he came back from the washroom. 
I said hello to you is in, in German. He just looked to me like, what are you trying to tell me? So, because she told me, she already explained to me what is going to happen, I kept quiet, drive them to Arusha. Next day we drove to Tarangire. He was not talking to anybody, including his own wife. Because he's worried of the things that he's been reading in the books. The videos that are in television about Africa. The second day to Gorongoro, when we left the hotel in the morning, he said, are we going to see anything or are we just going to drive around and nothing, we just lose our money, we lose the resources. And I say, <laughs> and I say to him, what you're going to see today, you will not believe. The drive from the hotel to the rim of Gorongoro crater, where you see the caldera from the top, takes only 45 minutes. We reached the point, the highest point, 2,220 meters above sea level. As he was standing on the rim of the crater and he saw the crater by himself, he started crying. And then I was worried. If you see an adult person crying, there's two things, very happy, very angry. So I asked his wife, is everything okay? She said, now we have breakthrough. If you see him crying, he is happy. <laughs> he came to back he came back to the car, he became so talkative that anybody <laughs> very happy, take photos and now as I'm telling you, he is my client every year. Only this year because of the pandemic he didn't make it. But they are coming in general. So that's how addictive Tanzania is. You will enjoy it. Can always come and Excellent. African cookings for the women, so nice. You can go and make the coffee by yourself by bonding the coffee, not using coffee machines. You can do walking in the villages, get to interact with the local communities, see what they do. They will welcome you, cook with them, go to the waterfalls, go to the banana plantation, pick the banana by yourself. So there's plenty of things to be done in Tanzania, well, actually in Africa. I will speak specifically about Tanzania because we have been doing a lot of that and most of the Western people are talking of the white Americans or the, the Europeans they are coming to Africa and learning about those things so it's our time to learn about our own culture with the different part of the world yeah. Absolutely. so you're always welcome I appreciate you guys, and excellent, excellent yeah. you're welcome Thank you, fellas. Actually, we'll be doing the cultural tour in Arusha, where the Arabica coffee is being grown a lot. Who we'll loves coffee you. here? Yeah, we like it. We should take some coffee with you. So you'll, you'll get to know how you pick, how you process it, and how you make a cup of coffee out of your own coffee that you pick. As you know, coffee cannot be, be done by the machine, and let, uh, except by peeling. The drying is done by hands, and then Roasting, if it's not a big uh, project, a big uh, company, they do it by hands. I and Eugene, we've grown up in Karatu, where the Germans were, and there are coffee plantations. And we used to go and pick coffee, and we used to roast coffee. So we know how to. We have books that shows you what temperature you need for a certain type of coffee, like espresso, to be very strong, to be mild, but we grown up doing it, so we do it by experience, yeah. and we still get the exact results. In the southern tea. part of Tanzania, we have tea, like Iringa, Morogoro. We have tea there, but not in where we are. As you know, that Tanzania is uh, it's in between two hands or two arms of the great African Rift Valley. So if you're talking of African plateau, Tanzania is in is, is that plateau. And that's why today we have a lot of tribes. Since this area was not accessible to a lot of people. And along the Rift Valley is where we have a lot of certain tribes. In those days nobody really wanted to be here. And if you look like to the map of the colonialists when they came to 
to Africa, they really passed our area and go more to the interior where they reach more people because this area was not that uh, famous. So if you're coming down from Lake Turkana in Kenya, if you look into the map of, our, of East Africa, you'll see how the, the Rift Valley separates and one arm is what we will see go to Arusha National Park tomorrow, we'll, if the weather allows, we can go into the proper distance. But uh, the other side that is going to part of Congo, Rwanda and down to Lake Tanganyika, we cannot see it from here. Then it joins down in Mozambique and go back to the ocean. So here, we have a lot of things. The soil is volcanic, very nutritious, very fertile for the plants. We have a uh, plateau where you can grow everything like the tea, coffee. Where we are, we grow Arabica, but if you go to that part, the southern part of Tanzania, they grow Robusta coffee. So, all are coffee, but different shape for the height of the trees, but also the test, the quality is different. When we are in Zanzibar, in case of, if, if, if it's the season, we can see the Robusta trees, the spice rocks. And our coffee is organic. Someone will say, why? We don't spray on the coffee because most of our coffee is grown up between the big trees, so we don't need to spray. That's perfect, fellas. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.